Now it's time to move on to tea cakes that are actually cakes, and you are going to love my Earl Grey Sweetie Cakes. And what makes them even more special is I use tea in the recipe. And that's the first place I'll start right now. I've got beautiful Earl Grey tea. Now Earl Grey is a black tea that's flavored with bergamot that has sort of a light citrus note to it. But of course that toastiness of the black tea is a back note. I'm gonna spoon two teaspoons of this loose leaf Earl Grey tea into my sachet. To work the flavor into my recipe, I'm gonna measure a quarter cup of milk and the tea is going to flavor that directly. So while that's heating, I'm going to measure an ounce and a half of milk chocolate. Because I'm using baking chocolate, I weigh it as opposed to scooping the measurement. One of the reasons I like using milk chocolate is for the color. It's more subtle than dark chocolate. And then when you bake up these sweetie cakes, they have that same color tone as a cup of Earl Grey with milk. But also the flavor is mellow and complements the black tea base that makes Earl Grey tea. I'm just gonna push that tea bag around, really draw out all that flavor. Oh but I can smell that Earl Grey tea flavor, that hint of citrus from the bergamot. Mm. So now I'm gonna squeeze out the tea bag and just add the chocolate. And I'll just give it a little whisk. I'll set that aside to cool a little bit. And now I can start on the cake base. I have half a cup of unsalted butter that's softened and in my mixer. To that half a cup of butter, I'll add half a cup of sugar and now I want to add a little Meyer lemon. A Meyer lemon is a cross between a lemon and a tangerine. So the juice is sweeter than a typical lemon and the zest has an aroma to it that's a little more floral. Meyer lemons tend to have a short season, so if you can't find them, you can use a little bit of lemon zest and a little bit of tangerine zest combined. I only need a teaspoon here. Now I'll give this a good blend. There we go. You'll find that half a cup of butter plus half a cup of sugar, that combination one to one, doesn't whip up as fluffy as say a frosting or a cookie dough base, but believe me, it yields a fluffy end result. And here's a nice little reminder about the temperature of your ingredients. When I made my scones, I had cold butter, so my eggs and my milk were cold. Because I have room temperature butter here, my eggs are at room temperature. Now I'm ready to sift my dry ingredients. These sweetie cakes are wonderfully moist, and it only takes two thirds of a cup of all purpose flour. I need a teaspoon of baking powder and just a pinch of salt. Now I'm going to add half of this to the batter, mix it in, and then I'll add my milk mixture. By now, my milk with the melted chocolate and the Earl Grey tea has cooled down, so with the mixer on low, I can add this. Now for the rest of the flour. And now you see what I mean about a cake batter that looks like a cup of Earl Grey tea with a little bit of milk. Now I'll admit, I just made up the term sweetie cake to apply to this recipe because they're just so sweet and adorable. But essentially what it is is a cupcake. So you can bake these in standard cupcake liners or find a sweet little tin to bake them in as I have here. I've preheated my oven to 350 and they take about 18 minutes to bake. I check the doneness like I do any cake. I insert a skewer in the center when it comes out clean, it's all done. Ooh, these are looking good. Yep, done. There we go. Perfect, now I'll let these cool. But 
while they're warm, I can smell that perfume from the Earl Grey and that hint of Meyer lemon. And you know what we love about cake, let's be honest. It's the frosting. And you're gonna love the Meyer lemon that's in my fluffy frosting. This is a classic cupcake style frosting, really fluffy and light. I start off with half a cup of unsalted butter that's softened in my mixer. Of course, you can use electric beaters too, but you do need some sort of tool to really get a lot of air and volume into the frosting. I've already sifted two cups of icing sugar. I'm going to add half of that to the butter and then whip that up first. You don't have to precisely measure the half and half, just sort of give it a glance. There we go. Even though this butter icing sugar combination looks nice and smooth, it won't be fluffy and light. You need to add a liquid. So I'm going to add my Meyer lemon zest. I'm putting two teaspoons of zest in. It's pretty much the full lemon. And now I'll juice the Meyer lemon. I'll squeeze out the juice. But I only need two tablespoons of this lemon juice for this recipe. I'll also add a teaspoon of vanilla. And I'll give this a little blend. You'll find at this point when you add the lemon juice and the vanilla that it won't be smooth, but you wanna try and get it as evenly blended as possible. There we go. Now I add the rest of the icing sugar, and at first I beat it in on low speed, but then it's important to beat it on medium high speed for about two to three minutes. That makes the frosting nice and fluffy. There we go. Oh, that looks great. Mmm, well, there's such a beautiful, delicate aroma to Meyer lemon. Just gonna give these a simple little twist. Just so sweet, that's the idea. In my bakery days, I would make hundreds of cupcakes, but what I loved seeing was when you cleared the tables at the end of the day, sometimes you would find a cupcake almost like this, except you realize some eight-year-old had just licked off the frosting, because we all know that's the best part, and just left the cupcake on the plate. And then sprinkles are always appropriate, or a little jelly candy. Just shouts lemon. Oh, what a great selection. And now I'm all set for a tea party. And you will be too, with all these great tea cake ideas. Whether it's something classic, like the current orange scones, something whimsical, like the windowpane tea cookies, or these elegant but adorable Earl Grey sweetie cakes, I hope you take all of these ideas and a cup of tea to your own kitchen to bake and enjoy.